you there. So, today I'd like to invite you to have a look at some more French exercises. And I have once again a different book compared to the ones I've used before. This one is called L'Exercier. And it is for level B1 to B2. So, intermediate. And it's français, langue étrangère. So, French is a secondary language. The good thing about this one is it's all in French. So it's probably too difficult if you're a beginner, but that's not who this book is for. So it assumes that you can understand some basic French. Um, but you can use it no matter your native tongue. I've gotten some questions from the Norwegian books that I've used, but unfortunately those are all uh, German to Norwegian. So if you have a different native language, uh, they're not really of use for you. But anyone can use this one. And this is a book that I actually like quite a lot, and I've used it quite often, as you can probably tell by the corners here. It's already a little bent. <laughs> and I'd just like to show you a little bit how this book works, what it looks like, what I think the um, really good points about it are. And then we're going to do some very simple exercises. We're going to look at one of the units in depth. So, one of the things I like is that all the exercises in the book have these little notes next to them. So you know how difficult they are. It goes from B1.1 with one tree to B2.2 with four trees. So you have one, two, three, four levels of difficulty. And you can always say at one glance what kind of exercise that you're looking at, and then pick them accordingly. Here you have some conseils d'utilisation, so it tells you how to use this book. And I think the important part is just right here at the start. L'ordre de présentation des chapitres dans le livre Elle est toujours c'est pour des raisons de commodité analytique et n'est donc pas une progression à suivre à la lettre. So, the way the chapters are organized doesn't mean that you should work from the first chapter to the second to the third, etc. But rather they've been organized in a way so you can easily find what you're looking for. And exactly the exercises that you need. So I don't think there's really a point in going through it from start to finish. Now you see it's quite a big book. So we have 24 units, all in all. them for a moment. So we're starting off with the basics. 
la phrase, la construction des vers, l'article, possessif et démonstratif, les pronoms personnels, les pronoms relatifs, les indéfinis, les prépositions. So you have the different uh, types of words here, articles, pronouns. Then here we get the prepositions, and here two different types of the phrase. L'interrogation and negation, so question and negation. We have le passif and nominalisation. So this I think is quite a useful chapter. How to turn verbs into nouns or the other way around if you prefer. We have le présent de l'indicatif, so present tense, le futur, the future, le passé, the past. And you see that I put the different types of past tense all into one chapter. Le passé composé, l'imparfait, and le plus que parfait. Then we have le conditionnel and le subjonctif. For me, probably the hardest part of French grammar that I've had to learn, <laughs> that I've learned many times and We'll continue to do so. And we have l'expression du temps, le discours rapporté, la comparaison, and then different ways of uh, expressing something or linking phrases. Hypothèse, cause, conséquence, le but, and le position, la concession. So this helps you with your style and with expressing your ideas. So you can see that this goes from the sort of more foundational parts to the different forms of the verb, the different tenses, to the phrase in general and expressing ideas and linking your ideas. Right. So I thought let's have a look at Le Passé at this chapter here. And I just want to show you what the chapters look like. Um, this is, I think, not too different from the uh, vocabulary book that I usually use in my vocabulary videos. So you have some explanations here at the start, sometimes quite in-depth, followed by exercises specifically related to the parts that you've just learned here. And here you can see what I showed you at the beginning. You have the level of difficulty. These are all B1.1 because it's uh, past tense. Passé composé. Here's a B1.2. This is something that you would learn early on if you're practicing French. There's not enough space here to fill out the exercises in the book, so you'd need a separate little notebook or a sheet of paper. But I think that's alright. It means that you can use your book more often and repeat the same exercises a couple of times and see how you go better. 
here we continue with some more theory the imperfect and we have more exercises there you can see the third part is imperfect and passive composition so here you have mixed exercises still quite easy And the fourth part, le plus que parfait. Again, some theory. Quite short in this case. Some exercises, and finally, synthèse. Meaning, these here now are mixed exercises with everything that you've learned in the chapter. And uh, these are. Still B1, you can say, you can do um, tons and tons of exercises. Here's a 2.1, but I'll show you, if we look at the subjunctive, for example, it looks a little different here. The subjunctive would start here. Quite a lot of theory on how to use it. Exercises, some more theory. Some more theory with exercises. And um, when you get to the end of the chapter, here you have quite a lot of B2.1, and usually at the end. 2.2. So these are the hardest types of exercises that you would find in this book. I know for some people this type of layout isn't ideal when you can't write in the book, but I think um, in this case it works quite well and you get a lot of value for what you're paying for it because, of course, these books aren't always cheap. And in this case, I also bought the uh, Corrigé. So the solutions. And you can look up all the different exercises in here. I'm going to put these solutions aside for now and let's go through this part Le passé Théorie générale, le passé composé So this is a form of the past in French and if you have learned French you probably know that you build it by using être or avoir, so there would be the auxiliaire, and then the participe passé of the verb. So there would be tomber, you would change the er to an e with an accent aigu. Tomber would then turn to je suis tombé. Tu es parti. Venir would become Il est le bon et venu. S'asseoir would be nous nous sommes assis or assises. Se couvrir would be vous vous êtes couverte. Mourir would Il ou elle sont morts ou mortes. That would be the form of être. More common is the form of avoir, especially with the regular verbs. This is quite easy. For example, manger would be a regular verb ending in er. And then you would just use the present tense forms of avoir. 
chez manger. Here we have some back on the verbs again, like to a fini with an I. Courir would become il, elle ou on a couru with a U. Comprendre would be nous avons compris. Peindre turns to vous avez peint. Ouvrir il ou elles ont ouvert. So, in principle, it's quite easy. Present tense form of être ou avoir. And the passé, uh, and the participe passé of the verb. Now, the difficult part is knowing when to use être and when to use avoir and the form of the verb so that's the next part number two être ou avoir basically être would be used with what they describe here as 14 words I've learned them as verbs of emotion. So that's something like aller, to go, arriver, to arrive, descendre, to walk down, like walk down a flight of stairs, entrer, monter, mourir, naître. These are verbs of emotion in a very allegorical sense. Partir, passer, rester. Retourner, sortir, tomber and venir. It would also be true for these 14 verbs used in some kind of compound, like instead of venir, you might say revenir, to come back, or repartir. And generally for les verbes pronominaux, so if you have a se before the verb, like, elles s'est promenée dans le parc. Ils se sont levés à midi. Now, you might notice here, when we say, elle est partie. Partie, up here, we said it ends with an I. But, in the feminine form, when we have être, we have to add an E. So we turn this into the feminine form too. Here we have the plural, il, son, ne. We have to add an s because it's plural. And here we have el, so the feminine form in the plural. We add an extra e and an s. So this is important to remember when you use être. There are some cases where you can use both être and avoir, like descendre, monter, passer, rentre, retourner ou sortir. So let's look at this example here. It says, nous sommes passés par Rennes, meaning we went by Rennes. For example, in the car, we were going somewhere and Ren was on the way. So we were moving, it's a verb of motion. It's nu in the plural, we would use être and an extra s. However, if we say, again with passé, elle a passé trois fois cet examen, then it's not a verb of motion. We say, she took the exam three times. And sometimes that's quite easy to notice in the translation. We don't say she passed the exam, which in this case is not what this means. We don't say she walked by the exam, but she took the exam. So, not a verb of motion. We use avoir. And we don't add the extra e for him. 
so this really is quite logical. And for avoir, um, give a little explanation here, but I think we can ignore that and just say all other verbs that don't fall into this category go with avoir. Let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Now, the second part that's quite difficult with fringe is there's plenty of irregular forms. So you see this here? The top line here is the ending of the infinitive. It can be er, ir, ure, ire, aire, dre. E N D R E T R E V R E O I R or O I R E. These verbs here in the first column, these are your friends because they're regular and they're easy. You can see. The uh, participe ends with an E and an accent aigu. So ali ending in er would turn to ali ending with an e and an accent aigu. Same for manger. Er turns to e accent aigu. Manger, manger. And there's nothing else anywhere in that column. So these are all regular. With the other verbs. There are some rules, but uh, frankly, you're just gonna have to learn them by heart. Um, most of these, if you encounter them a couple of times, you're going to be able to remember them. But there's not really a way around, just practicing. So when you look at this column here, we have the verbs on IR. Some would end in an I. In case of the person, grossir would turn to grossi, finir, fini, partir, parti, maigrir, maigri. Now you might not hear the difference, but some would get a little S at the end. Acquérir, acquis, conquérir, conquis. It can help if you um, practice a sentence where maybe you have a word starting with a vowel at the end. So you would hear if there's an S here. Aquis, conquis. With some other verbs, you have an ending with a U. Tenir, tenu. Courir, couru. Venir, venu. Survenir, survenu. Parvenir, parvenu. Parcourir, parcouru. So you can say, if you remember veni, uh, tenir or venir, you already know some verbs that are compounds. Venir works the same way as survenir or parvenir. That's quite logical. Some would end with ERT, like couvrir or offrir would turn to couvert and offer. And we have one word that even ends with ORT, mourir would turn to mort. So, I'm not going to go through the entire table. But this is definitely something that I find very useful when you're looking up a word. That you have a nice little overview here. And here is some more information on the accord du participe passé. So this has something to do with 
the object but I think we're going to skip this for now and instead do a simple little exercise I made a first one here it's one of the very easy ones B1.1 être ou avoir telle est la question that's the question I'm going to use my little notebook here and we're going to write down the solutions in here and then see if they're correct alright so let's note the name of the book, L'Exercier we're on page 162 and we do an exercise one So, l'avion décoyé à midi. This would be l'avion à décoyé à midi. You might think takeoff is a motion, obviously. But when we look up our 14 verbs of motion, décoyé is not in there. And if it's not here, it means we're using our word. Number two, il arrivé avec beaucoup de bagages. He arrived with lots of bags. And arrivé is here. So that's a word that goes with être. Il est arrivé. Je mm -hmm, pas bien compris la situation. Didn't understand the situation very well. Understand with avoir. Je n'ai pas bien compris la situation. Then here we have L S apostrophe. Réveillé de bonheur. Now you might remember if we have a se, it means that we have to use être. And the second hint that we have that we have a second E we have E accent aigu and E réveillé meaning this can in this case only happen if we have the ce meaning we need être elle s'est réveillée de bonheur nous mm -hmm. vu de nombreux pays We've seen many countries. Nous avons. Elle se promenait dans la ville. Same case as up here, except this time we have in the plural. Elle, with an S, se promenait. We have the E for the feminine form and the S for the plural. Elles se sont. Les deux garçons voulu expliquer la situation, mais il mm -hmm, pas pu le faire. So the two boys wanted to explain the situation, but didn't know how. So les deux garçons ont pour lui expliquer la situation mais ils n'ont pas pu le faire they couldn't do it then here we have vous descendu tout seul we just said descendre is in here verbs of motion Vous êtes descendu tout seul. Number nine. Je retourne à l'université. Retourner is also here. But it can also work with avoir. 
So this is a case where we have to think But I would say it's uh, basically going back to university So it is a type of emotion Je suis retournée à l'université It might be different if you say you return the books to the library Then you would use it with avoir Here we have Anne et Sophie venue en voiture. So Anne et Sophie came by car. We already see the E and the S indicating feminine and plural, which we can only see if there's être. Anne et Sophie sont venues en voiture. Eleven, we have le ministre de l'économie mort hier soir d'une crise cardiaque. So, like I said, uh, mourir, naître, is more of a metaphorical type of motion. But we definitely say the minister est mort. Où est-ce que tu... Oups. Où est-ce que tu es né? Without a T. Mes amis et moi, nous revenons pour... Nous revenons pour tout vous expliquer. We've come back to explain everything to you. Nous sommes revenus. So this is venir, which would also work the same way in compound forms like revenir. Le directeur était très content de l'accueil qu'il reçut dans ce pays. So he was very happy. Il a été très content de l'accueil qu'il a reçu dans ce pays. Right. Fifteen. Excusez-moi, je ne mm -hmm. peux plus répondre tout de suite. So, excuse me, I couldn't resp uh, respond. Right away. Je n'ai pas pu vous répondre. Sixteen, we have l'été dernier, nous beaucoup souffert de la chaleur. So last summer we suffered a lot because of the heat. Nous avons seventeen. Quand est-ce que vous Rentrer, je revenu de Londres la semaine dernière. When did you come back? Quand vous êtes rentré? Je suis revenu de Londres. Came back from London last week. Eighteen. Quand est-ce que tu Allez faire ton dossier. When are you going to do your, um, your paper? Or when did you do your paper? <laughs> oh, sorry. Quand est-ce que tu... Yeah, tu es allé. Nineteen. Par où est-ce que vous passez? Nous, pris la route de Lyon. So, passer is the example that we looked at here. Nous sommes passés par Rennes. So, we would have vous êtes passé with the form of être. And uh, prendre would go with avoir. So, nous avons pris la route de Lyon. Right, and the last one. Ce matin, je... Pas entendu son numéro de réveil, 
je arrivais en retard. So this morning, I didn't hear my alarm and I arrived late. Je n'ai pas entendu and je suis arrivée. Now, let's see if this is correct. We have number one, ah, two, e, three, e. Four. EST five avant six son seven on two times eight at nine sweet ten son eleven EST A twelve A E S thirteen son 14A and A, 15A AI, 16 avant, 17 et and sweet, 18 ES, 19 et avant, 20 AI and sweet. So I'm gonna give myself a little plus for doing well on that one. It's uh, quite an easy exercise to start off the chapter, but sometimes it's good for the morale to do this. And the nice thing with this book, like I said, is that you can always immediately see what kind of exercise you can do. And what kind of difficulty level you're in the mood for. So, I'm really happy with this book. I think if you're looking for a good uh, grammar book, this is very helpful. And I hope that this video was helpful too, in helping you relax and maybe even fall asleep. Thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you again next time.